Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall see how to test whether two variables are correlated or how to test if they are independent. So we're going to do a bit of hypothesis testing. So this is the hypothesis we want to test. Uh, so the null hypothesis is that the variables are uncorrelated and the alternative hypothesis or the H1 is that they are not uncorrelated. So the null hypothesis says that the variables are uncorrelated and the alternative that they are in fact correlated, right? So this is what we want to test. So if you go out there and collect a data set and say the sample correlation ends up being 0.1, or 0 0.09 so it's a pretty low value right but it is not exactly zero right so the question is does this sample correlation of say 0 0.09 uh, does this say that the true population correlation is zero does this indicate that the variables are actually uncorrelated So we are going to generate our own data set because when you generate your own data, you know what the truth is and you can control several aspects of your data. So in, so in this course, we will be doing a lot of this that is generating our own data set. Um, so in step one, we are going to generate a sample of two variables that are actually uncorrelated, right? So we are going to generate two variables that have zero correlation and we will see how to do that. We will then calculate the sample correlation, right? So this is the population correlation. And once we generate the sample, then we'll calculate the sample correlation uh, from that sample. And then we will perform a test, a hypothesis test to see whether uh, the population or the true correlation is zero or not. Now, because we are generating the data set, we can control this step one, right? Otherwise, if you were to go out there and collect the data set, the step one is already done, right? We have no control over the step one when we work with an actual data set. How to generate uncorrelated variables? So the easiest way to do this is using multivariate normal distribution. This is just the multivariate version of the uh, normal distribution. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the normal distribution, right? Uh, so normal distribution, if you remember, it has this bell shift symmetric shape. It is defined by its mean and its variance right so the rmv norm function available in r will help us uh, generate this multivariate normal distribution so we need two things so if you if you want to use the rmv norm function we need to specify the mean vector and the covariance matrix so in the norm, if you want to uh, generate normal distribution, you need to specify the mean and the variance. So similarly for multivariate normal, we need the mean vector and the covariance matrix. So we will generate these two variables in such a way that their covariance or correlation is zero. Uh, and just a quick note, if the covariance is zero, it also means that the correlation is zero and correlation is zero also implies that the covariance is zero, right? Um, so if the two variables are uncorrelated, their covariance is also going to be zero. So how do we generate the multivariate normal data in R? So first of all, you'll need this uh, MVT norm library. So go ahead and load this library. Uh, then remember we need to specify the covariance matrix, right? So that I'm calling that as the SIG matrix. So this is a diagonal matrix, right? So I'm saying that the covariance between, so basically what I'm saying is I want to generate a two-dimensional uh, multivariate distribution, right? Because my covariance matrix has 
uh, is two by two dimensional, right? So I have two variables. The variance of the first variable is one. The variance of the second variable is also one. And the covariance between them is zero, right? So this sigma uh, helps you control um, the correlation uh, between or the covariance between the two variables. So to actually generate the data, you will use the RMV norm function. 2000 is the sample size. Um, the mean vector, I'm specifying, uh, I'm specifying it to be zero. And then finally specify the covariance matrix. So if you check the dimension of your data, it will have 2000 rows and two columns. So 2000 is the sample size. Um, two is the number of variables. So each column of this data matrix has a variable. So if we plot uh, or if we look at the histogram of the first variable, right, which is this. Uh, so this is histogram of all the elements in the first column, which is the first variable. You can see that this resembles um, the histogram of a normal distribution, right? You can see that it is centered around zero as well. So the first variable has a multivariate, uh, sorry, the first variable has a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. And the second variable here, so I'm plotting the second column, also has a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. So my uh, variables, so my two variables have a joint multivariate normal distribution and each of them also have a normal distribution. So this is the joint density. You can see um, this also has uh, a lot of uh, properties in common with um, uh, the, the bell-shaped curve of a normal distribution, right? Okay, so our main interest is to uh, see uh, to see the relation between the two variables, say the first variable is x and the second variable is y, and we look at the scatter plot. The scatter plot indicates that there is no relation between the two variables, right? And now if we, cal if we uh, calculate the correlation between x and y, so note that this is a sample correlation, right? So it's 0 0.03, it's pretty low, right? So is this low sample correlation of 0 0.03 evidence that the two variables are uncorrelated, right? So this is what we want to test next. So you can use this test core dot test right and then you input the two variables so i will uh, we will not go into the details of what this test does or how it works but uh, it's good to know how to at least execute this in r so this is a command core dot test and you can see uh, the output from this test as well so there are a couple of things uh, that you can focus on one is this is the correlation between the two variables and this test will output the p-value, right? So the p-value is 0 0.1197, all right? So, uh, so we are testing uh, null hypothesis is that uh, the variables are uncorrelated. The alternative is that they are correlated and p-value is 0 0.1. So which hypothesis do we accept? Right. Uh, so typically uh, what is done or traditionally what is done is you'll have a cutoff value. Cutoff value is typically set to be as 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. Right. And if the p value is greater than the cutoff. So if p value is greater than the cutoff. Then accept the null hypothesis if the p-value is lesser than the cutoff then we are going to 
reject the null hypothesis. Um, there's a lot of controversy about these cutoff values, uh, cutoff, cut, uh, cutoffs for p-values. Um, so you should be careful when you uh, have a cutoff value or, or when you use a p-value and draw conclusions in this fashion. However, in this case, the p-value is point uh, is is uh, greater than point one, so we can at least we can we can we can conclude that it's pretty high. Um, so I'm going to discourage the use of these strict cutoffs and we are going to generally follow the rule that if p-value is high, we will accept the null hypothesis. If it is low enough, we will reject it. Right, so in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis and thus we conclude that the variables are uncorrelated. Right now, since we generated our own data set, we know the truth, right? We know that the population correlation is zero. And in this case, our test gave us the correct results. So a hypothesis test does not always work. Um, there are, it is possible that it gives you an incorrect result, right? So the advantage of generating our own data set, right, is that we can, tell whether the result of the uh, hypothesis test is correct or not. So in our case, the variables were actually uncorrelated and this test also leads to the same conclusion. So the test works correctly in this case. So now we are going to generate two variables that are non-linearly uh, non related. So x is from a uniform distribution, y is cos of x. When you plot the two variables, you can clearly see that they have a non-linear relation. So what if we did the correlation test on this data set, right? How does that look like? So you can use again the core dot test function and this is the output. This is the correlation between the two variables. Uh, it's minus 0.13 pretty low and this is the p-value 0.167 so the sample correlation minus uh, 0.13 is um, close enough to zero but can we conclude from here that the variables are uncorrelated right that is the question so we look at the p-value p-value is 0.167 what do you think uh, do you think we will be uh, rejecting the null hypothesis or not? So the p-value is pretty high, right? So we are going to uh, accept the null hypothesis. We are going to conclude that the variables are indeed uncorrelated. So in this example, right, x and y are uh, not linearly related, that's for sure, but they are related in some way, right? But they're clearly related in some way. Um, so this brings us to the uh, next test. How do we test whether the two variables are independent or not, right? So we have concluded that they're uncorrelated uncorrelated only means that there is no linear relation between them, right? But are they independent? So this function d core, d core stands for distance correlation. Uh, it is available in R and it can be used to test for independence. So independence um, is a more general test than uh, the correlation test, right? Independence means um, that the two variables have no sorts, uh, they have no relation whatsoever. Correlation uh, or uh, correlation only talks about the linear kind of relation between the two variables. So this d core, um, it calculates distance-based correlation that takes value zero if and only if the variables are independent. So if this d core is zero, right, that means the variables are independent. And if the variables are independent, then this d core is going to take value zero, right? So uh, you can 
uh, obtain more information uh, about this from this website here. So this is the test now. The null hypothesis is that the X and Y are independent and the alternative is that they are not independent. To implement this test, you'll need this energy library. Then uh, you'll use the decor function. You'll input the two variables and you can see that the decor test statistic is 0.5 right so remember if it is zero that means they are independent and uh, yeah if it's zero they're independent so uh, 0.5 seems to be a pretty large uh, number look at the p-value p-value is pretty low right um, so p-value is pretty low so we are going to so yeah what conclusions can we draw so remember the rule Right, so since it is low, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So variables are not independent. And this makes sense, right? Because they clearly the graph of the variables look like this. They have a relation and it doesn't, yeah, and obviously they're not independent. The graph confirms this. Uh, the test also confirms the same thing. So that is all for this video. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.